People seem really uncomfortable with the idea of human brain tissue transplants, which have been done since the 80s and they were reasonably successful. It just stopped in part because of the optics, and we'll talk about it. This was a really exciting paper. This is where they grew tiny human brains of brain organoids and put them into stroke-induced monkeys. And you guys are probably familiar with the brain organoids. You can now grow human brain organoids just from regular cells rather than having to harvest them. In the 80s, they tried whole tissue transplants. They were from brain tissue from pregnancies that did not make it to term. There were some mixed results. Some people saw amazing improvement and some people had other issues when the tissue did not take, it didn't vascularize. Now, of course, what we as humanity has learned since we started doing stem cell transplants is that whole tissue does better. There's been loads of clinical trials just trying to take stem cells, put that in a damaged organ, and it just doesn't work. The cells need to be in a population of like critters that have already differentiated in order to establish themselves, and that makes a lot of sense. Yes, getting mixed results did play into the ending of this kind of research. It also had a lot to do with the public discourse around it. It was easier to sell using stem cells rather than whole tissue transplants. Now, my own grandfather perished of Parkinson's, and I come to find that we've had effective treatments for nearly half a century, but we don't do them because it makes people uncomfortable. You can, in fact, get all those fetal stem cells and grow them when they did not come from a fetus. It just requires, you know, making brain organoids. We are at the precipice of this field just exploding when it comes to medical applications. We've seen retinal organoids, we've seen other organoids transplanted into patients. It's just the brain organoids that seem to make people really uncomfortable. Even though the research has shown a great amount of success for Parkinson's, as well as for stroke, which this would be the first time stem cells were really effective at treating strokes ever. And it's been seen again and again with different research groups. Give us the brain organoids. Of course, one major barrier to actually using brain organoids really is public perception. Now we can't just jump right into human trials and that's a huge barrier for brain organoids because of headlines like this, first monkey human hybrid embryo reignites debate over hybrid animals. Yeah, people actually do this a lot, usually not in the US because of, you know, laws. But you can make humanized embryos. You can take stem cells from a person, inject it into an embryo, and those cells will grow as part of the animal. I've talked about the one where they did it in mice and the mice were actually more intelligent. And of course, we do have to use human organoids, even for the mouse trials. If they're ever going to be applicable to humans, we have to start with humans. Because if we were to just start with the initial animal, like mice or monkeys, those cells are likely not to behave the same way as ours, so this is the best shot at getting something that is applicable to people. It has been argued that if we are going to be using humanized animals at all in research, that we should treat them at a higher moral threshold than we would for non-humanized animals. That actually bothers me because shouldn't we be treating all animals as though they have inherent value? Shouldn't we be trying to reduce harm? But the idea that humanized mice are more intelligent than non-humanized mice is concerning just a little bit. I do think we also have the consideration of the level of intelligence, but animals have not been treated well in research forever. That's one of the reasons I didn't go into animal research, because I can't do it. I would be trying to take them all home. I did have a roommate in grad school that took animals home with her. If they were just going to be sacrificed, she'd just take the mice home. On a positive note for organoids, yes, eye diseases have been treated with retinal organoids that are grown for that patient. Now, of course, you might ask, but GT, if retinal organoids were grown for the patient, where do brain organoids come into play? Right there. That's the off-target tissue that would have been the neural tissue that did not turn into the eye organoid that was used in a patient. This can cure blindness. It's incredible. We are so close. And yeah, there's a lot of ethical conversations that absolutely should be had, but this technology is going to do a lot of good for humanity. We shouldn't just shirk it because it's, you know, a little bit creepy. What do you think? Are you excited for this technology or is the ick factor just too strong?